Welcome to In the News for March the 18th, 2022. I am Brett Burney from AppsAndLaw.com. This is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Good morning, Brett. Good morning, Jeff. 15.4. Finally, finally, finally it's yes. out. But I, I tell you what, before we do that, I thought you had a fantastic link in your, I think it was your first bullet point. Yes, it was right here. You linked to our friend Sharon Nelson. They run a cybersecurity uh, company out of Virginia. And they do some e-discovery stuff. And we, we both have spoken on panels with her and, and John, uh, uh, her husband, uh, many, many times. But I thought this was an interesting thing. Let me just quickly set it up. This is mostly for uh, law firms is what she writes for. But Sharon's blog is fantastic for all kinds of cybersecurity, no matter what you're doing. We've known about phishing attacks for so long. And that is the PH version of phishing, not the F version. We talked about phishing attacks. And it is it is so malicious. In fact, I read, I mean, I, I, it's surely not a day goes by where I haven't sent, talked to her about a law firm or a business of some kind get attacked by a phishing attack. And a lot of times today it comes out in the aspect of either ransomware or some kind of identity theft, you know, using the email addresses and that kind of a stuff. Now we've known about this for a long time because emails will come in and they will be fake. They look like they're real. They come from your bank. They come from FedEx. They come from Microsoft or from Amazon. The logos are there. The language looks very legitimate as in you need to click here immediately. Somebody has accessed your account. Click on this link quickly to make sure that you are safe and everything is correct. It, it, it is, it, it's sort of brilliant in the way that it goes. I almost call this social engineering more than anything else. And what's the first thing so many people do, unfortunately? And in fact, I'll even point the finger back at myself because it has happened to me. It's happened to almost to all of us. We'll click that link. And a lot of times that unleashes some malware, some ransomware, some very dangerous things into your computing environment or even your server, your network, et cetera, et cetera. Now we've known about this on quote regular email, but Sharon's blog, <laughs> that was a little bit of a long setup, but this such as this is so important. Sharon's blog post here was talking about phishing attacks on smartphones. And I have to tell you, this was something that I did not think about a whole lot. Because when I've gone around and given presentations, I have always told people, if there's even a hint that this email isn't legitimate, or it doesn't sound quite right, or wait a minute, you're like, wait, I don't even have a, an account at that bank. Why are they sending this to me? And instead of getting upset and clicking the link, take a moment to say, wait a minute, maybe I should not click that link. Maybe I'll visit the website separately. Or a lot of times what I suggest, and Sharon even alludes to this in the blog post, is hover your mouse over that link and see if the link is actually going to FedEx.com right, or Amazon.com right. or Bank.com. But we can't do that hover trick on an iPhone as much. If you tap and hold on a link, I know it will open up, but it almost gives you a preview of that website. So I know this is a lot of a setup here, but this was our, our public service announcement for for the morning quickly. This is a great post from Sharon. We'll make sure that we have it in the show notes. Uh, and it just talks about the fact that it's getting a little bit more dangerous, even on smartphones. Now, there are some there are some silos, you know, especially on the iPhone that that a lot of this can't get out into the wild like it can and you know, from a regular computer that's connected to a network. But uh, my, I, I guess my, my big takeaway from this, and I think Sharon kind of lands on this as well, is if there's any kind of a hint that, that you, it just makes you, it itches your brain to say, this doesn't sound quite right. If there's a little tiny flag that gets raised in your brain, then stop, right? Better to be safe than sorry, because it, this, this can be very, very malicious. She links to a story from ZDNet, and I'll have the link in that as well. Phishing attempts against smartphones are on the rise. You know, another point about the smartphones is that unlike your computer, where not only can you hover, but you also will typically see more information about the email on your computer screen, just because it's bigger. Um, but on right. the iPhone, things are a little more compact. So you might not yes, see as much yes. on your screen, you might True. not see as much of the header and here and Sharon mentions that. And so you're a little bit more at risk. And you know, remember, you know, you said that phishing could appear to come from your bank or for your company, phishing can also appear to come from somebody you know, because it, yes. somebody can get into yes. someone else's and say, so you're like, yes. Oh, well, that, that's good old john. I haven't talked to john in a few weeks, right? You know, and now 
now John right. is telling me something. So let me go ahead and click on this thing. And the next thing you know, I mean, on your smartphone, there's not as much risk of the malware taking over your computer network. So that's right. better. But at the same time, the smartphone is more familiar and you might find yourself, you know, getting to some place where it's like, oh, and by the way, remind me what your mom's maiden name is and remind me right. the last four of your social. I mean, I'm getting right. a little silly here, but right. those, these are all the red flags. And it's, Absolutely. it's just so easy to, to just move along and just assume everything's right. Um, it sucks. It absolutely sucks it that we got to be so careful out there, I but know. you do, and it's on the rise. And so, you know, this is an important public service announcement for everybody. Yeah, I'm glad you linked to that. And I think I'll just reemphasize here. It, unfortunately, there may not be just a whole lot uh, available to circumvent this. But again, Sharon in her blog post here is that if an email alert or text message, even that's another big area, right? Too, it's text messaging on your oh, mobile yeah. device. If it, cause I've, I've been receiving a bunch of spam on that. Me if too. it claims to come from a particular brand, it's wiser to go to the actual website of the brand in your browser and log into your account from there. Oh my goodness. You know, I, I, I know we've talked about this a little bit, but I'll just share. Here's an example that, that showcases even my ignorance. I paid my AT&T bill like I normally do, right? But then I got a text message and it looked like it came from AT&T, Jeff. And, and it said, hey, we just received your payment on the bill. Uh, click here real quick. And I forget what it was that tried to uh, entrap me. It was something like, you know, claim your $10 bonus or something like that. This was a text message, Jeff. And guess what I did? I'm like, well, wait a minute. I just, okay, I just paid my bill. I don't know how they found out. And what did I do? I tapped that text message. And you know what happened? I got charged a second time for my wow. AT&T bill. And it came from something that looked like it was an AT&T charge, but it turned out to be fraudulent. Hmm. Do you know that probably took me about five hours total to make phone calls, both to my Apple card, which I was using, and to AT&T to get that resolved? Like that's where some of this can be. I was I was stupid <laughs> to click that link. I knew better, and yet I fell for it. And it, anyway, it just it makes me it makes me sad that that's what the world that we do live in. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure. I know we've spent a lot of time on this, but it's just it, it, we 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 can't warn people enough <laughs> about this on there. Okay, so that was a great story. I'm so glad that you linked to that. That's our public service announcement for the day. Let's get on to maybe maybe more happier news. 15.4 <laughs> is finally out after us talking about this for what about five months <laughs> like that. <laughs> we knew that some of this was coming out even six months ago or so. You had a great post this week, uh, Jeff. Thank you for putting all the bullet points in here about the new features that came out in iOS 15.4 just released what uh, I think on Tuesday, March 15th. Yeah, Apple had some new product announcements, you know, new iPhones, new iPads, yes. and only a few of us are going to get those, but we can all take advantage of 15.4 mm -hmm. and the related updates. You know, there's new new iPad it's OS, new Apple TV, you know, and, and all sorts of different things. And there's lots of new features, and we'll be talking about these for weeks. I mean, the one that will get yeah, a lot of yeah. people to download it, of course, is the new emoji, that there's a bunch of new ones in there. <laughs> I like that's your lead. I like yeah. that you were, that was your lead what, bullet point. <laughs> that is often what convinces people to upgrade, because they're like, somebody's sending me an emoji, and I can't see what it is yet until I upgrade, and there are some Fun new ones in there, so uh, so that's and I'm going to be using one of them. One of the things that I uh, is there you know, a melting? Oh yeah, melting, a, a melting face. face. Oh excellent! For oh sure. that's brilliant. That's there's great. a disco ball, or they call it the mirror ball. <laughs> there's lots of different hands. There's there's just uh, oh yeah, what you're showing now from Emojipedia has got a bunch great. of the different ones in there. There's there's some really some of those faces are actually really cool. I like the one with sort of the the big eyes and, and there, there's there's cool ones. So the oh, emoji alone is face. is a yeah. good reason to update. But there is a ton of other features. We're going to be talking about some of them in our in the know segment yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, I didn't even mention in that post, there's all the security upgrade uh, updates that you get, yeah. um, you know, both the regular ones and then, you know, related to that, the Apple um, AirTag changes. Um, when you first install the update, and by the time that folks are listening to this, maybe you've already done so, you have already seen that screen from Apple about the change, not changes to it minor changes to the SOS system, but really just sort of a reminder mm -hmm. of how it works. So if you find yourself in a horrible, you know, hopefully it won't happen, but in a situation where there's a burglar in your house or something like that, you should absolutely know in your head, right. how does SOS work? How can I trigger it? Would I prefer for it to make a noise before it calls 911 or whatever, right. wherever you live in the world, you know, your version of 911? Uh, because, you know, that way, if it happens accidentally, you can hear it. Or would you prefer to have no noise so that if there truly is a burglar in the house, you can call 911 without 
you know, somebody hearing that you're doing so, you know, these are decisions to make, but you should understand, you know, all the implications yeah. of that. Um, yeah. And there's, there's many, many other new features in here too. It's, it's a, it's a nice update. Um, I thought, I actually assumed that this is such a big update that I assumed that it would really be the last one before, uh, you know, we start to get ready for iOS 16, which I suppose right. will come out later this year. But um, I'll note that um, I was listening to a podcast this week that Mark Gurman was on, MacBreak Weekly, and he yeah. has heard rumors that there's going to also be a 15.5 um, coming out uh, in around June. So in with maybe a couple of new features in there too. So we shall see. But this was this was a big one. Lots of new features. I've heard I've heard zero problems of anybody downloading it. So go ahead, download Agreed. it, take advantage yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, I know we're going to talk about a couple of others here in a few moments, but let me just ask you one that I found very curious, Jeff, this password notes. Mm -hmm. uh, I know both you and I are very big fans, first of all, of getting any kind of a password manager, but it's more specifically, you and I are big fans of 1Password and both of us use it for a lot of the features that Apple is just now putting into their own keychain. Now the I, the keychain has been around with Apple and you know your iCloud keychain which can hold, you know, your passwords both on your Mac and your iPad and your iPhone. And I got to tell you, I know a lot of people that will use it because it is obviously built right into Safari. You know, it wasn't I mean just a couple of years ago where we could choose to have one password fill in our passwords, you know, on the Safari browser on our iPhone and that was huge for us because we've been using what you know, we had to switch back and forth between uh, the one password out. But what do you think about this? It, you, th one of the features is that in the iCloud keychain, not only will it store passwords, but now you have the ability to put in some notes to those passwords, which I do pretty much all the time in one password, Jeff, you know, I'll say, here's when I created this account, or I'll talk about, you know, the time that I changed the, the password, or, you know, sometimes I'll even put my security answers, you know, in there, like the questions and stuff like that. And if you can do that now within the iCloud keychain, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, I mean, here's my overall thought on this. I think that Apple should release its own built-in password manager. And yeah. I say that because it is yeah. so critically important. Heck, we just Absolutely. talked about phishing before. And an yeah, aspect yeah, exactly. of this is you need mm -hmm. to have unique yep. passwords. You can't use the same password on multiple sites because when one site gets hacked, you know, then yes. bad guys have your password and they, yes. they try it at your bank or they try it on Amazon. Right. But then uh, they also need to be, you know, complex passwords and a password manager is perfect for creating and storing yes. those. Yes. Um, so I think that Apple should, and it's because it's so important. If Apple does it, I know that they will do it in a way that will sort of appeal to the masses. You know, the <laughs> Apple Podcast okay. app is incredibly okay. popular. It doesn't have all the features that Overcast, which is the app that I used to listen to podcasts has, right. Right. but everybody's got it built into their iPhone and it's right there. And so That's I right. wish, I, I think That's Apple right. should go that final step. Apple hasn't gone there yet, but they're, they're one or two steps behind it, which is, although they don't have a specific app, for passwords, right. they have the capability built in because, it, like you said, the iCloud keychain it will keep track of your passwords. If, if mm -hmm. you it'll if um if you use a, a PC like I do at work, you're out of luck. But if you live within the Mac ecosystem, the Mac, iPad, iPhone, then right. you can enter a password in the um in the iCloud keychain on your Mac, and yeah. it will be available for you in your iPhone and vice versa. Um, but because it's a little behind the scenes, it can be a little confusing as to what it is. And so what Apple has done yeah. in this update is by adding a notes field, it gives you the ability to, you know, you may store a password associated with a bank, but then in the notes field, you can clarify, um, you know, here is the, um, here's the email address that I use, or this works for such, you know, any, anything that you want to sort of remind yourself about something about that password, not only to be a note that you can read, but also that if you go into, um, the settings where the passwords are on the iPhone and the iPad, you could search across it. So like if you're looking for a password and you're like, oh, this was the one that had something to do with, you know, my cousin Sue, you can just put, you know, Sue, her name in the notes field and you can quickly find it that way. So these, I view them as great features on their own, um, but I'm hoping it's the build, and we're so close. I'm hoping it's the building blocks right. before Apple right. having something built in. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. If Apple yeah. has its own password manager, I suspect I'm going to still use one password because one password exactly. has far more features. I can share yes. it with family members. It's got yes. other things it stores besides passwords. I have my, you know, everything from my pictures of my driver's license to yes. passport information. Yes. But, right. um, but I think, and that's, that's often been the right case. You know, Apple has a built-in weather app. 
But if you want something more sophisticated, you can get something like Carrot Weather. Apple yeah. has a built-in calendar, but if you want mm -hmm. something more, you can pay for Fantastical. True. I think this True. should be the same way, and I view this as a step towards it, and I'm all in favor of that. Well, in, in event, I would just say you you hit the nail on the head, I think, when the fact that you're using one password because you have a PC at work and you've got an iPhone and you've got a Mac So for at me, home, it's, yeah, I can't rely it, upon, you know. It's cross-platform. I mean, an Android, and in, in, in one password will even work on Android. And, and just that idea that it's cross-platform, because, you know, and, and I was first going to jump in and say, why doesn't Apple just buy one password? But now hearing you I don't want them to, <laughs> mm -mm. because I think that would go away. They would just in, in, inst integrate that into you know the Apple ecosystem, and then that would cut out a lot of other people that uh, wouldn't have access. Okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm I wanted to hear your thoughts on that because you and just like you said, we just talked about phishing, and it's not like password manager is going to avoid that, but it will help inevitably when it happens. Right? That you need to go and change, and the password manager helps you to do that. Uh, all right. Very good. Now, last week. We talked about the new devices or new products that Apple came out with, and I thought maybe we would have been done with that, but I'm glad that we're not. <laughs> There's You had several excellent links, Jeff, from uh, other people that now had, have, had started reviewing the new iPad Air fifth generation, the new iPhone SE. Let's start with the new iPad Air. You had a great write-up a couple of weeks ago, but you had some links to John Gruber and to Dan Morin at Six Colors. Uh, and uh, yeah, it seems like, it, it's kind of funny when I was reading your links, it's like most everybody, I believe, is thrilled with it but now it's almost we talked about this last time there's that little tiny gap like where does it fit in exactly and dan Moore even went to an ipad pro instead of the ipad air and i think he had some good reasons for that yeah the new ipad air and the new iphone se we'll talk about that in a second both of them come out today right today is friday uh, right for this friday march 18th you if you pre-ordered them they should be showing up as soon as today and you can walk in an apple Yay. store today and buy these um but what apple usually does is Right after they announce it, they provide review units to like reporters for major right. you know, newspapers and stuff. So yes. folks that have been using it for a couple of days, they their, their embargo lifted a day or two ago and they've written they about it. They can send to us too, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Always accepting it. We'd love to have it. But um, so uh, so we're now we're actually hearing from hands-on, not just Apple's yes. PR speak yes. on what the product right. does, but what people right. have actually used it. And what I thought was interesting is the iPad Air. For the most part, everything that I predicted would be great about this product, the reviewers mm -hmm. are really agreeing with it, which is perfect, Agreed. which means yes, that it's living yes, up to exactly. the expectations, yes, which is fantastic. Yes. And the one interesting tweak is I had recommended, and I still, I still recommend this, that mm -hmm. if you are a lawyer or somebody else who has a need or has, it couldn't be good for you to store tons of documents, you know, like a lawyer would have all the different PDF files from all of the, the pleadings and their litigation right. or all their Images, contracts, videos. and transactions. you know, it is very easy to start to fill up an iPad. And I think that, oh, I think 64 gigabyte is too small. It just is. I think Agreed. 128 is, is, can be okay, but 256 is a size where for most people, you are just never going to have to worry about size limitations. And that's great. Right. I personally right. am a little above that. I have a 512, even though I don't come near to filling it, but 512 means I never oh, have to worry about extra space. I do have more than 50, but anyway, so I think 256 is a sweet spot. And what I wrote last week was that if you're going to get a 256 gigabyte, do you get the 256 of the iPad Air, which is the right. one level up, or do you get or the 256 of the iPad Pro, which is one level up? And between the two, it's $150 more for the Pro. And my conclusion was you probably wow. aren't going to use those extra features. But now that people have used it, like, for example, this post by Dan Morin that you mentioned, yeah. who writes for six colors, he, for, he doesn't need 256. He said that 128 is more than enough. Yeah. And from his standpoint, if you're going to get a 128 model, first of all, there is no 128 model of the iPad Air. You uh -huh. either get 64, Weird. which is too small, yeah. or 256, right. which he thought was too big. Whereas yeah. the iPad Air, you can get the 128. And second of all, the price difference, the iPad Air with 128 is 800 bucks. The iPad, I'm sorry, the iPad Pro is 800 yeah. bucks. The iPad right. Air with 256, twice as much space, but he doesn't need it, is 750. So he was describing how, you know, it would cost him $50 more to get the iPad Pro, <laughs> which has less space, but he doesn't care because he doesn't need the extra space. Right. But for that $50 more, he can get features that he really enjoys, like the very nice ProMotion screen and some other features like that. Face and ID, yep. Face ID is a big one. You know, right, I, right, in fact, right. John Gruber wrote in his post that he would pay $150 more for Face ID. <laughs> face ID is really nice on the iPad because it's, especially if you're using it sitting there on your desk because you're just looking at it, 
it just sees your face, it logs you in, everything's quick. Um, I don't consider right. it a huge inconvenience to have to put your finger on a power button. But having said that, for me personally, I love Face ID. I really do. Yeah, and I, I would yeah. miss it. If I, so the point is, Dan has a nice take that for him personally and for his needs, because 128 right. was more than right. enough, it's worth the extra 50 bucks for those few iPad Pro, uh, Pro features. I still think that for most people, for most attorneys, for most, for most other people, I still think the iPad Air is all that you need. And the things that it's missing versus the iPad Pro are probably not going to make a difference to you. Like, you know, you don't need Thunderbolt, you know, on, on the USB-C connector and stuff like that. So, um, and you probably yeah. don't need 5G if you're going to get the version with the um, cellular. Right. But I love right. articles like this because these are real people actually yeah. using it for their yeah. tasks and they're talking right. about what makes sense. So, but the conclusion remains the same. iPad Air, fantastic job. Bravo to you, Apple. This is a great iPad. Mm -hmm. At some point in the future, we'll see a new version of the iPad Pro, and then maybe there'll be some reason to spend the extra money on it. But for right now and for the next six months or so, you know, this is the default iPad that folks should get, the iPad Air. I really enjoyed John Gruber's uh, post as well. And right at the very top here is three bullet points here. There, well, you know what, let, let me just preface it by saying this, I'm going to go out on a limb. I think the iPad line is too confusing right now. I think Apple okay. has muddied it up a little too much right now. I agree with everything you say, but you and I, you know, live and breathe this a little bit more. But I, I mean, the fact that we're even having to talk about this and Dan Morin's uh, 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 post here, you know, about the comparison, it's like, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I just want it to be overly simplified. And Apple mm -hmm. has done that. And I think, you know, I, I, I would guess the reason that there are so many options now in the iPad line is because they're they're able to sell it, right? There There is a, a place for each one of these. And I totally get that. But like John Gruber starts off here, there's the iPad with no ejection adjective right just the ipad alone there's still a low cost one there's the ipad mini very small one we have the ipad pro he likes to call it the 13 inch instead of the 12.9 inch uh but then uh you know so he says if you want the cheapest smallest biggest uh your decision is easy and you know if you want the biggest one the morse pro one that's easy too. You've got it. But it's like in the middle where most people's needs, desires, and budgets reside, choosing between that 11-inch iPad Pro <laughs> and the 10.9-inch iPad Air is not so easy. You do a brilliant job of describing it, Jeff. And if we could have, you know, if everybody could just call you on the phone and ask you <laughs> when they're trying to make that decision, I think that would be great. But um, it, I, I guess I'm looking at the silver lining for me as I'm hopeful that this means that Apple is going to do something crazy good to differentiate that iPad Pro, right? In other words, now that we see that gap get smaller, Apple, I feel like, has to do something to really jump that iPad Pro even a little bit higher. Maybe I'm wrong there, but um, I'm glad that you are able to uh, to describe this and talk people through, Jeff. But right now, I don't know. I, I feel like it's... Um, it's it, there, there's just so many like I used to be able to keep track of it when it was like the iPad mini and the iPad right then we had the air and now we got the iPad regular now you know then the, there's two different minis and anyway it could be a little crazy uh yeah, let me just take but, a little uh, contrarian view there I mean of course good, I hope good. that the next version of the iPad pro has something crazy good new feature that's fantastic <laughs> but I will also say that what Apple is currently offering in its iPad pro it's fantastic. Yeah, and if the next version true. of the iPad yeah, Pro yeah. just did some little minor improvements around the edges, that would be perfectly right. fine with me. First of all, I wouldn't be tempted to buy a new one. But second of all, my current mm -hmm. iPad Pro is awesome. And I'm going to be fine with it for a long time. I don't think it needs many new features right now. So it, I'm yeah. okay with Apple taking a year or two before they really do something new. If they just do a minor bump this year or early next year, I'm totally fine with it. And then okay. on your on your confusion point, I agree with you, Brett, that if you get deep into it, you can have questions. Having said that, I actually think in some ways it's simple. Anyone listening to this podcast, okay. whether it's you yourself or whether your right, loved one right. is asking you, which one should I buy? Just tell them to buy the iPad Air. They're not going to go wrong <laughs> with that. Just keep it that simple. Get the iPad Air, period. You know, Either get the very low entry Done. level model if you're not going to store lots of stuff or get the 256 yeah. if you want to store stuff yeah. on it and just end it right there and you could spend I, an hour talking about all these features yeah, but yeah. there's a simple answer and then then you have to go to the accessories after that, after that. <laughs> uh, I, I will say that i think both dan and uh, john gruber and 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 maybe even frederico i think on the mac stories that mm -hmm. you link to as well they all pointed to the fact that this is 
Apple really does a very good job on their website on how to compare the different iPad models. I love this page so, of their website. I do too. I do too. Exactly. That's why I wanted to point it out. So, you know, in all of this, uh, after you listen to Jeff and <laughs> you just go and get the iPad Air, if you did want to make yourself feel better about your decision or whatever the case may be, this is good. You have the drop downs here. They, they do a very good job, even though there's like lots and lots of models here to compare between. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the best places I think that Apple has done so that you can go and compare for yourself and you can look at the features that are going to matter to you because it is really getting down to the point where, you know, it's, it, it really matters based on what you do. I mean, even the size to me, that's one of the biggest things is the size components on how much you need. I got to tell you though, the a vast majority of business professionals I work with Jeff, if you know, they think, Oh, I got to have the biggest and best. So like one terabyte, but the fact that you personally knowing you Jeff, and you only got five twelve. And, you know, because you're like high end power user and you capped it at 512, that's that's good. Like, I don't know anybody that would need a terabyte unless you're like a professional photographer, right? Or videographer and you're using the iPad. Videographer is the head. big one. Yeah. Exactly, because that's going to eat up all that space all the time. But for most like general business professionals, like you said, 256, 512, I think it's going to be more than enough for uh, for most people on there. From the iPad Air, the new iPad Air to the brand new iPhone SE. I don't even know what generation this is specifically, but it's the one that was just announced in 2022. You link to John Gruber, you link to a great article from TechCrunch as well uh, on the new iPhone SE, Jeff. Yeah, that's the um, the third generation is what it is. Third generation. But okay, good. Here, here's the big thing on the iPhone SE that now, again, now that people have had reviews and have used it, I, I think the reviews have fallen into two categories. Um, <laughs> okay. All of the reviews have agreed that this is a very nice little device, got a lot of power. Um, yeah. The difference is some people have said that um, this is just this great thing because it's for those who like the comfort of the design they've known for years. And Ooh, they say okay. it's a feature that the yeah. iPhone SE still has a button, has just got the one camera, it's small. Um, right. Other reviews have said, oh, it's got all these powerful insides, but but the design is, 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 is not up with the ages. It's not kept right, up with right. the new great stuff. Old. And you know, both of those are true. It's just a, it's just an, a matter of perspective. I mm. personally do want the shiny new thing. I prefer having my entire screen devoted to the screen. I don't want to take up space right. for a button on there. So, and and for that's why for me the iPhone Pro or you know the, the, just the regular old iPhone even are great for me and for people like me. But there mm -hmm. is absolutely mm -hmm. a class of people. I talk to them all my time. You know, my 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 mom was like this. My dad is like this. My wife, you know, she doesn't want. She just wants to get stuff done. And to, <laughs> to put this in, in in another context, you know, take for example cars. I'm not a car enthusiast. I, I just want a car literally to drive me from point A to point B. So when I hear people talk about how they spent, you know, $80,000, $100,000 on this car that does all this thing, and maybe it's got like a, you know, big wheel. I don't even know what the car said. You know, all the crazy stuff. I just want to drive to work and go to the grocery right, store. Right, and so from right. a car, great, I am like, I want analogy. like the iPhone SE of cars. And so for people that are the same way for their iPhones, the SE is great. And I love that Apple is, you know, you could see Apple saying, no, no, we're not going to support the button anymore. That's the old stuff. But I love that they still do because it's so yeah. familiar that yeah. the last paragraph of the iPhone uh, of John Gruber's review that you had here that I quoted on my website, and I forget the words yes. you can pull down there. He says that that yeah. the, um, you know, there is a profound thought, thoughtfulness and longevity in this design. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he says, it's yeah. like a great athlete, year, great athlete years past their prime, but still pulling their weight on the team, contributing something essential. Those are, those are two great sentences. And so that's, I love that's that the great. iPhone SE is out. For some people, it's perfect. It's not the phone that I'm going to use, but you know what? It's the phone that a lot of people are going to use. So, yeah. um, and it's and it's yeah. got some more oomph now that with the upgrade, it's a little bit more powerful. No, it's not going to take pictures nearly as nice as as the the iPhone that costs twice as much. Nor would you expect it to do so. But right. um, but it's a right. nice device. I think last week I made the comment that for my kids, for the for the kids in the family, you want everybody to be on the Apple ecosystem for the iCloud, for the component, you know, for sharing the, the, the iCloud subscriptions and everything, but I'm not going to buy them a pro. <laughs> I'm probably not even going to buy them a, a regular iPhone, but this SE is a perfect uh, spot for that. So mm -hmm. good, good stuff. 
another link that you had, which I thought was uh, great, was about the Apple Watch. Now, I don't think the Apple Watch got a lot of love in this last update, but you found a link, which I thought was interesting. I, I don't know if anybody else, I had seen this anywhere else, <laughs> and it's very small, but if you got an Apple TV and you want to buy a, a movie or something or an, or an app or, or an something app. on okay, yeah. on the Apple TV, you don't have to go and make sure, you know, I guess you sign in. And it, maybe you can describe it a little bit better, but you can use your Apple Watch to make the purchase now. That's very cool. Right. You know, if you're sitting in front of your Apple TV to authorize a purchase and you need to type in your password using right. your remote control, Ugh, that is yeah. a pain in the it spirit. Is. Nobody wants to do yes. that. Okay. Nope. Um, nope. So it's much easier if you have your iPhone with you because you can authorize it on your iPhone. But what if your yeah. iPhone's in another room and you just or have to be wearing your watch? Yeah. Now, just like you, they've had this on the computer and on other things for a while, you can use your watch to authorize the purchase. So it just makes it even more convenient. Now, I guess you could selfishly say, well, of course, Apple wants to make it easier to spend money because they get more money. Ha, ha, ha. But, you know, Apple is not going to, you know, win, <laughs> win or lose the uh, the lottery based upon right. whether I spend two ninety nine right. to rent a movie. Um, but right. this makes it right. a lot easier. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, it makes sense. And I'm glad that they added this feature. There weren't a lot of new things added to the Apple Watch. I agree with you, right. Brett, but there's a couple right. small things. And this is this is a nice one. And just uh, to be clear, uh, we've been talking about the iOS 15 or iPad OS 15.4, mm -hmm. but this, in order for this to work, you have to make sure that your Apple TV is upgraded to TV OS 15.4 and your watch needs to be upgraded to watch OS 8.5, yep. which I have to tell you, it's very easy to do, by the way, if you've gone through any of this, I mean, it tells you right on your phone that it needs to be, that your watch needs to be up, updated and you normally have to put it on the a charging stand of some kind, uh, but it just walks you through all of that. So I, I updated everything like that, but you do have to make sure that you are uh, updated on on the uh, newest things. And then I think the link you had right after that, if you're looking for an Apple Watch, this is a great price, by the way, you link to this in the Amazon uh, store, the Apple Watch series, the 41 millimeter, that's the smaller one. Uh, mm -hmm. The bigger one is 45, I believe, right? right. Uh, $340. What? Wow, what a price. I mean, just for being out for a few months. Yeah, that's $60 off. Uh, you know, wow, a lot traditionally, Apple products did not really get discounted very often. But no. I've noticed over the last few years that you can sometimes find AirPods or AirPods Pro for a really yep. good discount. And you yep. can some find, sometimes find an Apple Watch for a really good discount. I, I actually, if you wanted the Apple Watch with stainless steel, which is the one that I have, yes. I linked on my website a couple of weeks ago to a really good price. And like it lasted like three hours before it went away. But here we are <laughs> Friday out. morning and the price is still there. So if you're in the market for the smaller version of the Series 7, you know, yeah, you're saving 60 a bucks. One. That's a really substantial savings um so uh it's if yeah you're it doesn't sound like a good. lot but in fact it was funny i was my wife and i went to uh costco uh last night and it, it, sometimes they'll do some pretty big uh uh discounts on that but a lot of times you can get you can save like a hundred dollars off or so like on an ipad mm -hmm. again not huge but uh Take you know that's probably the best you're going to get. <laughs> on yeah, some I will say just one quick thing on that. I actually think there's a decent chance Apple will have a new Apple Watch this September October. Yeah, so yeah, if you're yeah. on the fence and you don't mind waiting a few months, maybe you can do that. On the other hand, if True. you're ready to buy, great discount. Here was a neat little thing. We'll close it. We'll close it out with yeah. this. Talk a little gadget from the gadgeteer Julie Stratelmeyer, which I, I've been following for goodness knows a, a couple of decades at least. She's always had it great on this site, the gadgeteer, and she is always. Sometimes she'll find some of the quirkiest little things, and you leaked to one today, which I thought was great. Why don't you describe it, Jeff? Yeah, and I can't even see what the name of it is, but basically, it's this little piece of plastic that sits at the top of your flat screen television, and you put your little shelf at the top so that um, there's oh, a link Emerald to clip. Played. There yeah. you go. The Emerald Emerald clip. Clip. But yeah. just use the link that, that she has here that I have on, yes. on, the, on yes. my Friday post. But it's just this little thing that creates a little <laughs> platform so that if you, you know, for me, I have a shelf underneath my television and that's where I put my Apple TV. Yeah. Same but here. if your setup is differently or if you've got your TV mounted on the wall or something like that, this is a, a, a and, and, and if you have enough space between the TV and the wall to do it, I mean, it costs like 10 bucks. This thing's nothing. So, $10. you know, there, there may that's be it. many of these out there, but I actually had never seen something like this before. And so if you're looking for a place to put your Apple TV uh, and you like the idea of it being just right above your television set, you take <laughs> right. a look at this little link. This is a, looks like a cool little product. 
I love this. And, and, and it made me think of there have been some offices that I've gone into where you know, they have a conference room or a meeting room, right? And they want to go for that very clean look without any wires around. And what I have found sometimes that people will do, Jeff, is that they'll mount the Apple TV onto the back of the television, mm -hmm. either with like a, you know, what do they call it? The 3M stickies or something like that, you know, something that's going to keep it there, but it's out of the way. And I thought that might uh cause some interference or may not you know react as well to the to the remote but it seems to be just fine yeah like i like this for being out because i i'm the same way i have my apple tv where i can see i like to see the dot when it comes on so that you know and and, and uh be able to like have a direct line of sight between the apple tv and my remote so something like this it now sets it on top of the tv i love it but i'm just saying i've seen people be be very creative with the placement of the Apple TV mounting it on the back of the TV or other places like that. It doesn't have to be out in the open, uh, but this is a neat thing. Yeah, you can do that. But like you say, I like the idea of being able to see that light just to make sure it's on. And um, and I suspect that it, you probably get a little bit better of a connection if the TV's not blocking it, although you don't need direct line of sight for the remote to work. But yeah, yeah. cool product. In the know, let's go back to our favorite little features that we found in 15.4 okay and uh, I'm, I'm trying to say here's mine i'm i don't know if i had a link to this but let me see if i can uh, google something real quick yeah perfect i figured that uh apple would have a support uh, document for this so one of the things we've been talking about is using face id while wearing a mask was it about a year ago or maybe a little bit longer that apple did uh, come out with some improvements that you could use Face ID on your iPhone while wearing a mask, but it required an Apple Watch, right? Was that the main way that it worked there? Because it would basically unlock the iPhone with your Apple Watch as long as your Apple Watch was on your wrist and unlocked as well. And that worked okay. In fact, I, I embraced that. It was great. A lot of us were using that because at the time, a year ago or so, we were we were all wearing masks pretty much all the time when we were going outside. So I, I, to be honest with you, Jeff, I didn't think we needed much of an improvement. Like I liked all of the security ramifications. I still have to physically had the watch on, you know, had to be unlocked. Uh, and but I did notice when I had a mask on, it would take an extra few seconds for my face ID to unlock on the phone. But again, I just thought, OK, well, that's just a trade off, you know, for the convenience of it. But with 15.4. We knew this was coming. They were improving the face ID. And I really didn't know how this was going to work, but I'm pretty happy with it, although I have a caveat with it. Uh, it now will basically use the face ID, I guess, more with your eyes, right? It'll focus more right. on your eyes. And I remember the other thing quickly when face ID first came out several years ago, I was impressed that it didn't matter if I had glasses on or not. But in this time, I just upgraded to 15.4, I think on Tuesday. And it made me go through the entire face recognition process again. I'm assuming you had to do the same thing. Yes. I mean, it, it, it basically reset it because then it asked me to do my face and you have to kind of go in a big circle like this and it walks you through the whole process. It's really great, but it did require me to do it without my glasses because I wear glasses all the time. And then it asked me to put my glasses on <laughs> and do the whole thing again. So one of the things now that not only does this face ID work with the eyes? But now because it focuses, I guess, on this top part of your face, that if you do wear glasses, you can specifically tell the Apple uh, iPhone that you have glasses and that face ID needs to be more aware of that. And in a similar vein, now, not only can you wear the typical glasses you wear, but you can add glasses <laughs> and I guess like other profiles, if you will. I think of it similar to when, when I had touch ID, I could use several different fingers. I could have a thumb and I could have a four finger, right? I could have different fingers on the touch ID. Well, now I can have different glasses. Although I don't think it yet works with sunglasses. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I saw some caveats there. And the bigger caveat for me is I am a little worried that this is less secure. 
on that. But that's 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 my tip is I love the fact the it, it works great by the way. It's even faster than when I had to use the Apple Watch. It comes out once I did all of the setup and the face ID and it didn't take very long. I was I was pretty impressed. But now you can go in there and you can say you want to add another pair of glasses, just say if you got reading glasses or you know if you've got like on the nose glasses versus your regular glasses, whatever the case may be, you can add those now so that the iPhone face ID will kind of recognize the different kind of profiles on that uh, it works great but I am I, I am a little nervous I've just been using it for four days that the security isn't quite the same but um I don't know uh, w w I guess we'll see I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep using it because it is so darn convenient and I just traveled this past week where I had to have the mask on more than I normally do and it was fantastic to have that update yeah, let me, I mean, I have a lot to say on this. First of all, I agree okay, with you good. That, the, that the new face ID, uh, first of all, it's optional. Okay, so if you want to keep the old way True. that good it doesn't point. work with a mask, yes. you don't have to use this yes. feature. Um, right, and in right, terms right. of security, I haven't seen details on it yet. But keep in mind that face ID is, I think, 10 times more secure than touch ID. So, you know, unless this is good less point. than 90%, even, you know, even this reduced security version of face ID good might point. still be comparable with touch ID. We, yeah. I haven't seen stats on that. So we'll see that, I'm sure, soon enough. Um, but yeah. being able yeah. to wear a mask and use face ID without worrying about your Apple Watch is great because, as you said, it's faster. Yeah. It's also, yeah. you didn't mention it's more capable. It used to be you could just use it for unlocking your phone when you used your watch to do it. Mm -hmm. But now that you can, with a mask on, you can not only can you unlock the phone, but you can use things like Apple Pay. You can use yeah. like for one, my, my one password yeah. app, I can it unlock it with face it ID. Worked. I couldn't yeah. do that with just my watch before. I can now do it with my, with my mask on. Um, and that's nicer too. And I like that I don't have to use my watch when I'm wearing a mask. And I'll give you an example. So this morning, before I came in here, I got myself a cup of coffee, which you can see mm -hmm. is now empty from the coffee shop downstairs in my building. Um, I was wearing a mask because there were a large number of people in there. And I just still feel, feel you know, there, we all know that there's supposedly a new strain coming in the next couple of weeks of COVID. Yeah. And it's just so easy yeah. for me to wear a mask. So I often wear it when I'm around a lot of other people. Um, I had my iPhone in my hand because they use, use an app called Clover, which is just one of these. Yep, I know. Yep. That, you know, the, my 10th copy was free. So this was actually a free copy this morning. So I had my iPhone Yay. right there in my hand because I was getting my free copy. And then when I went to go pay for it, in the old days, old days meaning before this past week, I couldn't actually use Apple Pay on that phone. So then I'd have to put the phone away and use my watch and pay like that. But now I could still use Apple Pay right there on my phone, ah. even though my mask was on and it worked great. So I, everything about it, it's faster. It's better. You can use face ID while wearing a mask in ways that you couldn't yeah. do it before. This is yeah. a huge win for me. Um, and again, we'll, uh, the, the only thing is I want to find out more about security, but my guess is Apple would not have implemented it. And I agree. They You're right. Security stuff. You're right. So, um, and, 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 and let me just quickly add on there. It's iPhone 12 and higher, right? So this doesn't work with, with any of the others. It has to be an iPhone 12 at least. And mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, Jeff, it's only on the iPhone. It doesn't work like this on the iPad. I mean, obviously that's not as big of a deal for a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, but just yeah. in case people know, you have to have at least an iPhone 12 and it doesn't work on an iPad that has Face ID, doesn't work the same way quite yet. Yeah, but I think it's a big win. So this is a great new feature of the of the newest version of iOS, Agreed. iOS 15.4. Yes. The one that I'm, for my tip of the week, um, uh, my in the know is universal control, which I've talked about a little in the past. Yes. I tell you, Brett, it's, I've been using it almost every night and Me it too. works really, really well. I have yeah. my iPad to my left. I, this is when I'm at home, not, not when I'm in my office because I use right. a PC in my office. Yeah, I hate PCs. Anyway, but at home, I have my Mac in front of me, my <laughs> iMac. I have my iPad to my left. And um, I can yes. very easily, I just take my cursor, I go to the edge of my, my computer screen and it goes right over onto the iPad screen. Boom. And then my cursor is using, Boom. I'm using my cursor um, on my uh, iPad, which is great. I happen to use a, um, a, a trackball. That's always been my preferred thing. So right. my right. trackball for my Mac is moving the cursor on my iPad. My keyboard for my Mac is controlling the input of my iPad. And then I just move my cursor right back over to my computer and it works. If I could do this with my PC, I would be using it all day long in my office. Now I have an alternative that we've talked about before in this podcast, which is I have this Logitech keyboard that I can yes. tap a button and switch between the keyboard working with my iPhone, with my computer or with my iPad. And that's nice, although that still doesn't allow my, uh, my trackball to work with my iPad. So it's not as good. So I have, I have, you know, something 
okay in my office, but I wish I could use this feature. It works really, really well. Yeah. And um, it's it's really useful because, you know, if you got an iPad next to you, it doesn't work with the iPhone. That would be cool too. But you have an iPad next to you, sometimes just because I'm doing something on my Mac, um, but like my email or my text messaging is over there on my iPad. Yes. I just want to type something real quick. And this makes yes. it so easy to do. So it, there's a couple steps you go through and I've linked to how you do it. It doesn't take very yes. long to set up. Yes. It, it's on by default on your iPad. You just have to turn on a few settings in your Mac um, and it works great. So whether you're using an iMac, like an iMac like I do, or a MacBook Pro or a MacBook, it, whatever Mac computer you use and whatever iPad you use, this is a really nice, useful feature. Bravo. Absolutely incredible. And the way that it's implemented is so fun too, Jeff. When you first set that up, first of all, I mean, it just works, but I love the first time, and this picture doesn't really do it justice, but the first time you move your cursor to the edge of your Mac screen and go over to your iPad, it sort of has this, I almost call it like a rubber band <laughs> effect. I don't know what else to call it, Jeff, but it you can see your cursor coming out and it's almost like the I, the Mac is like, no, I don't want you to go over to there just yet, but okay, I'll let you go. And it's just cool. It only happens like when you first initially set it up. And then from that point, it's seamless. Anyway, it's just little tiny touches like that, that I just, I, I go gaga over. I just, I loved, I love that. And just exact, I, I've been using it too. I mean, any, everybody I have heard talk about this has just been gushing over it. And we've been waiting for this for what was it? Wasn't it? WW it was announced last 2020? Summer. Yeah, oh, last almost. time. Okay, 2021. Okay. So it, it almost a, a year. I mean, we've been waiting for this and Apple, we thought it was it was maybe going to come out in, in iOS 15 or so, but no, we had to wait quite a while. And uh, wow, I mean, I'm so glad we did because it's we know that it worked. I, I, I it, it just was amazing how quick. Cause just like you, I thought to myself, the keyboard we've used before. The other way that I've used the iPad is almost like a second screen for my Mac, right? Sidecar does that. And I used to mm -hmm. use an app called Duet Display, but now no, there's a Mac. And then now there's the iPad. And I've done that before. I've had my iPad next to my Mac, my laptop, because I'll use my iPad for certain uh, 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 things, just exactly what you were saying, for right. text messages or so, but I use my Mac for something else. But now the trackpad and the keyboard is so seamless. It's really mind blowing. Of course, you have to have a Mac in order for this to work, but bravo Apple on implementing. I mean, we've been waiting for, for a long time and people were getting a little nervous about it, but uh, man, just really fantastic. Good stuff. And, on, and by the way, on the on the Mac, you can rearrange like what side the iPad is on. Okay, we, we can yeah, probably I see talk that. about that. I haven't that. even tried that because for me, it's just worked seamlessly. It, it just neither my iPad was on the left. I've heard people say that if you use an external monitor with yeah. your laptop computer, it might get confused over where things are in, you know, is right. it on the left or is it on the right? Um, but for me, just having a simple iMac in front of me and an yeah. iPad to my left, it, it knew it, it, it. I didn't have to set any of that stuff up. Yeah. So. Even great. better. Okay. What a great so much new fun stuff. Man, I tell you. Yeah. 15.4. We'll probably keep talking about it more. Oh, I'm sure. But thanks. For a while. This, this was plenty for this week. And we'll see you next week, Jeff. <laughs> see you, Brett. Bye bye, everybody.